let B and C be bases in R2, such that vector B sub 1 is defined as the vector negative 1, 3, vector B sub 2 is defined as the column vector 1, negative 2, vector C sub 1 is defined as the column vector 1, 4, and vector C sub 2 is defined as the column vector 1, 3. And we're asked here to find the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C, and then find the change of coordinates matrix from basis C to basis B. So, starting with part A here, we are asked to find the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C. So we know by definition that this is the matrix defined by the coordinate vectors of the basis B relative to basis C. So we have our first column vector is the coordinates of vector B sub 1 relative to basis C. And the second column vector is the coordinates of vector B sub 2 relative to basis C. And so this is what we want to find here. So to get us started, let's begin by defining the coordinate vectors relative to basis C. So I'm going to go ahead and let the coordinates of vector B sub 1 relative to basis C be equal to the column vector with weights C, x sub 1, x sub 2. And this is such that x sub 1 and x sub 2 are the weights or the scalars or those coefficients. And we'll do the same thing here with vector B sub 2, or the coordinates of vector B sub 2 relative to our basis C. And we'll use different weights here. Let's say C sub 1, or y sub 1, y sub 2, such that y sub 1 and y sub 2 are the weight. All right, so using this, we then want to think about the definition. So by definition of coordinate vectors, we know that we can take our vector b sub 1 and think about this as the linear combination of these weights and the vectors of basis C. So we have vector B sub 1 is defined as x sub 1 times vector C sub 1 plus x sub 2 times vector C sub 2. And we can convert this vector equation to the matrix equation form. So we have the matrix with column vectors C sub 1 and C sub 2 multiplied by the column vector of weights x sub 1 x sub 2. And so we can really see that definition coming in here. We have our change of coordinates matrix relative to basis C, and we have the coordinates of vector B sub 1 relative to basis C. I will do the same thing now with vector B sub 2. So we have vector B sub 2 is equal to the linear combination of the weights and the so the y weights and the column vectors of the basis C. So I have y sub 1 times vector C sub 1 plus y sub 2 times vector C sub 2. And again, we can convert this to the matrix equations. So we have the matrix with the column vectors C sub 1, C sub 2, right? The change of coordinates matrix relative to basis C multiplied by the coordinates of vector B relative to or vector B sub 2 relative to our basis C. So we need to go ahead and solve both of these equations here. So it's going to be the most convenient if we create an augmented matrix using both of these systems and solve it simultaneously. So what we're going to do is solve both systems simultaneously by creating the following augmented matrix. So we want to augment the vectors of basis C with the vectors of basis B. So in other words, we'll have the augmented matrix with vector C sub 1 and C sub 2, and we're going to augment this with the column vectors of basis B. And we'll row reduce to get the coordinate matrix. 
So plugging in what's given, we have the column vectors of C. So C sub 1 is 1, 4. Vector C sub 2 is 1, 3. And we are augmenting this with the vectors of basis B. So I have negative 1, 3 and 1 minus 2. And we can now row reduce to echelon form. Or row reduce to row reduce echelon form. So here we go. Using our first pivot, we want to use that to eliminate the entry below it. So we'll do negative 4 times the first row plus the second row to attain that new second row. And so this is equivalent to the augmented matrix 1, 1, negative 1, 1. We have negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 4 plus 3 is minus 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 plus 3 is 7. And then negative 4 minus 2 is minus 6. So our first column is good, and we move to the second pivot position. And we want to use that to eliminate the entry above it. So here we can simply do the second row plus the first row to attain the new first row. And so this is equivalent to the matrix. We have 1, 0. We have 7 plus 1 is 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is minus 5. And then to get our second row all set and ready for that row reduced echelon form, I'm actually going to add an extra row operation here. And let's just scale that second row by negative 1 which leaves us with 0, 1, negative 7, positive 6. And so we have the identity matrix on our left-hand side here. So this is the 2 by 2 identity matrix augmented with the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C. Woohoo! So this tells us that, therefore, the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C is the 2 by 2 matrix defined as 6, negative 5, negative 7, 6. And so this is our beautiful final answer to part A. And so to solve part B, we're looking for the reverse. And there's a couple of different ways that we could solve this. So for part B, we are asked to find the change of coordinates matrix from basis C to basis B, which we of course know is the matrix defined by the coordinate vectors of basis C relative to basis B. So that's going to be the coordinates of vector C sub 1 relative to basis B and the coordinates of vector C sub 2 relative to basis B. So we could use the same process that we looked at in part A, or we could use the inverse. So let's switch it up here and use the inverse. So we want to recall that the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C, or the inverse of this change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C, is equal to the change of coordinates matrix from basis C to basis B, which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and use our answer from part A, which is a great way to check your answer in part A, and find the inverse of it. So let's let the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C be defined as the two by two matrix A, B, C, D. And we just found this. This is 6, negative 5, negative 7, 6. And we can use that 2 by 2 definition to find the inverse. So we'll start. We'll actually give ourselves plenty of room. So let's start by computing the determinant. We know that the determinant of the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C will be equal to AD minus BC. So this is equal to, we have 6 multiplied by 6 gives us 36 minus negative 7 times negative 5 is positive 35. Oh, how nice. So our determinant is 1, which does not equal 0, which confirms that, yes, this matrix is invertible. So we are now ready to find the inverse. 
So we have the inverse of the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C is, of course, defined as 1 by the determinant of the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C multiplied by that 2 by 2 matrix D minus B minus C A. So plugging everything in, we have 1 by 1 for the determinant. We don't really need to write that. We then have 6 multiplied by a positive 5. Or not multiplied by, we have that 2 by 2 matrix, 6, 5, positive 7, 6. And that's it. And so here is our beautiful final answer, which of course we could double check by simply taking the product. So we have that. the change of coordinates matrix from basis C to basis B, we know is equal to the inverse of the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C, which we have just determined is six, five, seven, six. And so this is our beautiful final answer to part B. And if you want it to be extra good and double check, we could always do, remember this is a two-sided check, we could do the, does the coordinate, or does the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C multiplied by the change of coordinates matrix from basis C to basis B, is this equal to that 2 by 2 identity matrix? And we can also check the reverse of this because matrix multiplication is not commutative. We would also want to check that the change of coordinates matrix from basis C to basis B multiplied by the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C. Is this equal to the 2 by 2 identity matrix? So that's a nice way to double check to make sure that you get all your points on a quiz or test.